ladies and gents and welcome back to London. We're out and about again today. This is Sinead with Free Tours by Foot. We just exited Camden Town Station. It's Friday, 22nd of April. Beautiful day again here in London. About 18 degrees. and alternative neighbourhoods in London, Camden Town. Just giving you a little aerial view, a panoramic view rather. Straight ahead is Camden High Street and extends all the way down here. Right down the end towards the Coco Club. You are exiting from Camden however, you will be end exiting from Camden Town Station and in a moment we'll be heading straight up. Just a rather interesting, weird fact. I just wanted to show you these toilets over here, actually. Ladies and gents, these toilets were the very first public toilets for ladies in London, uh, which was rather controversial at the time. The major campaigner for those toilets to be open was the wonderful writer George Bernard Shaw came up against a lot of criticism at the time so some people thought it was well undesirable for ladies to use bathrooms outside their houses it's considered undignified shall we say but thankfully George Bernard Shores of campaigning opened up the very first one here in Camden Town so we're gonna be heading up the street now this is Camden High Street this will take us up towards the markets. The Camden is a very eclectic town. I suppose it really kind of developed around the 1960s with the punk scene. It's a place for alternative goth clothing, fashion, souvenirs, jewellery, and more importantly, food markets. And even more importantly, the top reason we come here all the time there's incredible music, you guys. And here is one of the most famous music venues in Camden, and indeed in London, the Electric Ballroom. Started out actually in the 1930s as a dance hall for the Irish navvies. Navvies were navigators. Our members of the working class, the construction workers that fled here to work on the canals and the extension of the railway. Now here's the first market we come across today, Inverness Street Market. But just a little bit more about Electric Ballroom. It's seen some amazing artists playing there over the years. You two have been alive on stage in there. Prince, of course, has great history with their the Sex Pistols, including Sid Vicious. Had a one-off gig in there called Sid Sods Off. He had been at a gig in there, actually. And he saw the Greedies, and he was looking to buy his ticket to America, to New York City for him and Nancy. So he set up a little punk band. They had a one-off gig in here. Apparently Shane McGowan of the Pogues attended that amazing gig. And that's when he earned his ticket to go to New York, that very fateful journey. And we all know he never returned. Very controversial circumstances. They died of a heroin overdose in the end, but definitely worth checking out the incredible movie with Gary Oldman, Sid and Nancy. So there's the iconic image there of Camden High Street. Now the Inverness market was the first market here that was usually for fresh produce. But with the introduction of so many of the major supermarket chains to the area, it became more like one of these souvenir stores. Now let's have a look here. You'll see some amazing advertising on top of these buildings shortly. Here's another one that's just opened up. It's like a little pop-up Buck Street Market. And all the amazing little food markets and the bars on top. There's a lovely roof top bar up there. They were built in storage containers. That's a big deal here in London at the moment. There's another one in Shoreditch, actually. Okay. So, here's the high street. Just want to show you some of the 
there were stores along the way. This is a, all these major art installations on top of the building. We're introduced to advertise the product in the stores. So you have Converse there. I love the well, sneaker store. We'll have ones for Dr. Martin Namaste. You'll see the gods of India. This street is usually souvenirs, jewelries, pretty much an eclectic mix of everything along the way. Now, what I do recommend is if you do come down here to buy, particularly on the high street here, I would haggle. They always up the prices and then you have to bring them down a bit and they expect you to do so. Trousers, we'll have a look soon. Amazing collection of stuff. It's, a, it's also known for its like I guess counterfeit goods if you like you'll get a lot of fake Louis fake Stella McCartney's Rolexes and some wicked boots there you guys I'm just gonna keep moving up here now we'll be taking around the food market shortly as well just a little bit about the history of Camden so Camden stood on the side of what was known as Kentish Town Manor and it was owned by the first Earl of Camden. His name was Charles Pratt. Now Charles Pratt had an idea of developing Camden into an area for the upper educated middle classes essentially like a an extension of Regent's Park because Regent's Park is in the very close proximity. I'll show you in what direction later on. And as it was, well, with the extension of the railways, actually, from the London-Birmingham to Birmingham Railway, and the completion of the canal that ended up running through Camden Town here, it attracted the working class, the navvies from Ireland, fleeing poverty and the famine in Ireland looking for work here. They came in their thousands, actually. And it attracted working classes to work on the docks, on the lock, and building the railways. So over the years, it expanded into a much more densely populated area. All the beautiful Regency period buildings were redeveloped into accommodations for the working class. It became quite a lively neighborhood. A lot of smoke and pollution in the area noise and fog and the Irish of course working class from Scotland and working class from Wales all flocked here for cheap affordable housing pubs built up fairly quickly then as a result in fact there's a great story about all four different nationalities living here together maybe doing a 16 hour hard day's manual work uh, 16 hours of hard days manual labor heading straight to the pub afterwards but notoriously after a few drinks the different nationalities ended up well having scuffles and fights so frequently they felt like they had to separate them and they built four different pubs for each of the nationalities so here you have the Dublin Castle for the Irish, you had the Edinburgh Castle for the Scots, you had the Pembroke Castle for the Welsh, and finally Windsor Castle for the English. So that kind of separated them all and gave them all their individual space. In fact, straight down the end of the road, straight ahead of you there under Candom Lock Bridge, right down the end is Chalk Farm Station. That was also known as Penguin's Corner because all the Irish, after they attended Mass on a Sunday, or attended church, they'd all hang around there in their Sunday best, dressed in their beautiful suits. And it became known as Penguin Corner as they were waiting for the pubs to open. So the Irish have a great history here. But I guess in the 1960s, the draw of affordable accommodation and the birth of the entire punk movement, students and uh, well, advances in further education in this country 
students arrived here in their droves and of course they contributed massively to the development of the area and particularly to the music in the area. Now the reason I'm taking you this direction first is I want to take you down here. There's a very famous pub along here. It's a number 27 bus, just bear with me. So you've had some very famous residences. Ooh, a little noisy there. You've had some very famous residents in this neighborhood. Over the years, you've seen the likes of Charles Dickens have lived here. I uh, will see. And one of the more famous residents, of course. And she died here in Camden on the 23rd of July in 2011. It was Amy Winehouse. Now, Amy Winehouse frequented this particular pub very regularly. This is the Holy Arms, you guys, and it's got an amazing rooftop terrace there and a beer garden out the back. When you walk in there, it's hard not to see Amy everywhere. There's pictures of her up on right behind the bar. She was often known to hang out with the locals. People came here to get a sneak peek at her. One of the greatest singers of our generation, no doubt about that. And Amy was known to serve them behind the bar herself. Pints of whatever, her preference, I believe. I was told in there by one of the bartenders was a drink called Eryxtasy. It was a very potent drink, actually. It was a pint glass with three parts of the comfort, one part banana liqueur. There was two parts vodka and one part... I think maybe Bailey's or something. It's a really bizarre concoction anyway. They don't serve it in there anymore, but uh, Amy Winehouse, much loved in this neighborhood, the neighborhood she grew up in. In fact, she worked inside the Stables Market here, and we're gonna be heading in there in just a minute. Now it's called the Stables Market because, well, it was a stable for working horses, and the last working horse, to literally retire in there it was in 1967 not that long ago actually so just want to show you this piece of work here this is one of seven dedications to Amy in the area Amy Winehouse and we'll see some more of her as well now some other famous people that lived here over the years George Bernard Shaw Walter Sickard a very famous impressionist artist did a series of paintings um, around the time of there was a very famous murder here in 1907 in Camden. Walter Sickard actually, incidentally, was uh, mentioned as a suspect in the Jack the Ripper investigation. That's a tour we also have on our free choice by London Science, conducted by yours truly. Probably one of my favorite to conduct. So the stables market was basically the stables for the horses. And at any one time, there could have been up to 400 horses here. They were used to, for transport of, from uh, goods from the barge and from the canal. And they were a very important part of building the canal. Had a horse hospital in there and a blacksmith. And you'll see it with the cobblestones on the pavement. So I think what we'll do is we'll head straight in there right now, as soon as I can cross the road here. I want to show you around. Let's go see what's on offer in the stables market. That will take us over onto the lock in Camden Market. Now, the history of music in uh, Camden is just insane. Everybody's played here from Blur to Oasis to the Sex Pistols to the very first gig, actually, and the only gig in London by the Doors took place in 1962 in another very famous music venue just at the very end of that street called the Roundhouse. I saw Prince's last gig there in London ever. Prince loved Camden. He opened up a shop here on Chalk Farm Road as well, especially for his fans in the 1980s. But for right now, let's head in here. Okay, so show you what's on offer in the stables market. Um, we got fish and chips and waffle steak and burgers. There's so much 
food in the area. Originally, these markets only opened up in 1974. So this was a disused warehouse on the lock and the stables market as well. So they rented out 16 stalls to the local for arts and crafts stall and they opened up a little market. Now it has over 1,000 stalls in here. And it's literally everything on sale. But the reason I'm taking it this direction is this is the dedication to Amy Winehouse in Camden. Now this was erected in 2014. It's uh, life size. Amy Winehouse died here in Camden on the 23rd of July in 2011. But this statue attracts a massive crowd of people. It's uh, definitely one of the greatest singers of our generation. We take it down here. There's a beautiful little store for the kiddies. Hansel and Gretel store with some life-size statues of Hansel and Gretel. As you can see there. A real eclectic arty store there. Hansel and Gretel UK. It's like a little sweet and pastry store. Let's have a little get an idea how funky it is in there. Okay. So let's take a little look inside here. I want you to have a look at the beautiful decoration on the rooftop up here. It's all the umbrellas. So it became a great place for fashion and for alternative fashion. Um, Camden is really promoted as an area of expression and self-inclusive, self-expression and inclusivity. Okay, get you a little look here. Pretty, the sets of colors are just divine. So it is Friday, traditionally Saturday and Sunday are the busiest days here in Camden. So it's probably the better day to film around here. All the bags, beautiful. Uh, Counterfeit Stella McCartney's. Amazing vintage stores. you there. You see some installation of umbrellas, colourful umbrellas there. I love that shirt, it's grey. Newspaper print. Leather goods store, you can smell the fresh leather. It's very chilled out here today, you guys. Look at that gorgeous lighting store, quite trippy. Home. Sports directors always one on every corner. Just standard souvenir stores, you'll find quite a few of them. Oh, some beautiful handmade masks. They look gorgeous. Rolling stones always makes an appearance. The rockabilly and goth clothing store as well. So it's close to fit every genre. Style, a lot of Frida Kahlo in there. This is colourful and exciting around here. So you'll see the uh, horse statue there above that beautiful to represent the stables. The majority of these stalls are inside of now, the former stables of the horses. Great leather workshop there, you guys. And these are amazing. Look at the goth clothes. That's your bag. This is the place for you. Yeah, we're in Stables Row. Along here. You see there's so many corners and nooks and crannies, it's hard to know which one to take. Dr. Martin store. Always makes an appearance. There's another Dr. Martin store around by the station actually. And around there is where, just above that, the very famous band Madness lived. 
and we believe that's where they pen the track for our house in the middle of our streets. But we can't complete a journey around the Staples Market here without mentioning Cyberdog, you guys. Now, I'm lucky enough in that I've asked permission to go in here, so it's going to get super loud. Be prepared. Um, I'm hesitating for a minute because I'm just trying to get my mask to wear indoors. So Cyberdog is clothing for ravers and for the techno club scene. So kind of cyber goth, if you like it. We're going to see a lot of neon in here. So it's going to get loud, so you can always turn it down if you like. So let's have a quick look around. So if you're enjoying the tour so far, go ahead and hit the like button and help others discover the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel. We also have virtual tours and channels that focus on Washington DC, New Orleans, and more. Look for free tours by foot wherever you travel. Now back to the tour. enough for you guys. Felt like I was in the Ministry of Sound again. Almost 20 years ago now, I reckon. Oh, let's go through here. I want to show you some more of the food stalls in the area. streets here. Yoski London. I believe that might be a Japanese brand. This place is rather bizarre. Don't quite know what to say about it, but it speaks for itself. Anything goes. Now let's go around a couple of the food stalls to see where all the buzz is at today. So, this is called Italian Alley, you guys. And usually around the back here, you have tables and chairs serving the food market. Let's go have a look at some delicious food. Asian Alley, Malaysian, Singaporean, Thai street food, Camden noodles, Italian Alley, that's the uh, Taiwanese. I'm assuming that's Thai and Chinese fusion. Tacky box. Magic juice, so sweet and savory. Churros. And more noodles up here. Just get a picture of what's on offer. Yeah. Sorry. Adjust, okay, look. Take some Indian. It's great, right? <laughs> Masala. That's where I'm oh, getting deliciously hungry now, you guys. Papa noodles in Chinese. All oh, right, if that doesn't whet your appetite, you've also got pizza and you have some Mexican grill. Look at that. Now that's right up my street, Mexican. Mexican grill. Look at this pizza, churros, and donuts. So sweet and savory. It's absolutely something for everyone. 
I'm gonna go into this indoor market again, so just bear with me. Mask on, mask off. Mask on, mask off. There's just some beautiful little arts and crafts and handmade jewelry along here. There's gorgeous silver jewelry. Hi. Now don't forget the record stores and the vinyl stores and vinyl is having a huge comeback right now. Actually, I think this year is the first year vinyl has outsold CDs in forever. You can even get your palm right here, look. Tarot and palm reading. So this chap has some amazing little posters. Incredible Hulk, some Banksy's prints of that. Great little store. Old camera factory. Wow, look at those old Polaroids, they're amazing. So, whatever your taste is, there's something for everyone here. Freshwater pearls. Bought some silver myself yesterday. I just want to show you there's something really cool up here, actually. We'll head out again around the food stalls. I want to show you this of Amy Winehouse again. Some, uh, we only said goodbye with words. Some beautiful prints of Amy, but not only that, right behind you, some more amazing prints. David Bowie's up here, Blondie's up here. That's the Rocky Horror Picture Show, La Dolce Vita. Full line. These incredible prints, which no doubt, and there's the Sex Pistols. Oh my apologies, it's the Clash. Melody Maker. Clash on the front of Melody Maker. Vida Carlo. Audrey Hepburn. I'm going to head up here now to the food again. Food market at the back here as well. salt lock and candle lamps how are you guys so we're out in the sun again mask on mask off right now this is proper food time around here folks so this chap is doing caricatures for a fiber Take you around here to see the different flavors to suit all palettes. As I mentioned, there's Mexican, there's Indian, there's Thai, there's Vietnamese, there's Portuguese, there's burgers, there's American, grilled pizzas, hot dogs, and of course, plenty for the sweet tooth in here as well. Curries, no worries, <laughs> gluten-free, dairy-free, so again, vegetarianism, veganism, gluten-free, something for everyone. Now everyone's flocking here today because of the beautiful weather, you guys, and it is stunning. Not too hot, not too cold, the sun is bright, it's shining down, I expect Camden to get very busy later on. It's lunchtime right now, so we're coming on about 2 o'clock in the day. On a Friday, 22nd of April. If anyone decides to watch this in a couple of years' time, it's 2021. Now let me take you around the back here. There's a lovely uh, bookstores along here as well, so if you're not just interested in fashion and food and drinking. Right. right now, I just want to take you over the bridge here to show you the canal. 
Now this takes us out onto what is Regent's Canal. So just to give you a better view, I'll take it up here and top for a second. idea the canal boats and the canal itself. So Regent's Canal was completed in 1820 and the architect is one of London's most prolific architects John Nash. Initially he wanted to run the canal through Regent's Park but of course the residents there, a very wealthy part of town, insisted they didn't want to hear any swearing or screaming and noise and pollution from the what they call the drunken navvies of the drunken working class. So instead it came through here. Now it runs all the way from Warwick Avenue and Little Venice. So that would start our way up that direction and comes all the way through Maida Vale, Paddington and en route it passes Regent's Zoo, Lee Regent's Park, London Zoo and ends up through here where you can get on and off some amazing canal boats. You can rent them yourself or you can pre-book a guided one. It takes about 45 minutes to get from Warwick Avenue to, uh, to Camden, but it's a lovely walk. And I think I want to show you a little bit of that walk right now. We're going to take a little stroll along the canal very shortly. There's a very popular outdoor pub there. All people enjoying the fine weather. London is open, you guys, but we are in outdoor part of our phasing of opening. So all the pubs and non-essential shops are all open, but as of May the 17th, you will be able to get back indoors again. So let's take a little trip along the canal, you guys, just to show you how you can escape the mania and head along here for a nice gentle stroll. Great views there of uh, everyone hanging out, having their bite to eat. So as soon as I get over that bridge, we'll be on our way. Does a great tour there in the music boat. Features live music. You even get a bottle of Prosecco with it, and a gentleman will play the guitar along the way, along the river for you. But right now, we're going to take a stro stroll across the canal and alongside the canal. Just want to show you the contrast between how busy it can be. How amazingly quiet it is. Beautiful sights along the way here. Stunning homes on the river, or on the canal rather. So we have a large barge there. Banksy favoured Muriel's doing a lot of his work along here. Apparently there's two or three of them. I have yet to find them. I'm a bit concerned somebody might have painted over them, but we'll see if we can come across anything. And we're approaching what's called the Pirate Castle up here. They offer canoe lessons on the canal or kayaking. 
And just a quick reminder, if you follow this path the whole way, roughly about an hour walk, good, good walk, we'll take you up towards Warwick Avenue and Little Venice, which is at this chat pass. Yeah, we'll head straight through here. Just one thing to be aware of when you're walking along here is all of the cyclists that tend to come way past in both directions, so I would pick a side and I'd stick to it. Is that kayaking school? Be a lot of fun along here. I'm going to take a lesson. Yeah. Let's see some of the beautiful properties along the riverfront. By the canal or the North Riverfront. Boat the gentleman was advertising earlier on. Guy playing music, and you can sit back, relax, while away the day along the canal. Really love this walk along here. Now, some of these are residential, by the way, people live on these canal boats along the way. Massively jealous of them. A great way to live in London. Out, of course is a massive feature here in this part of town as well as you can see my colleagues do amazing street art tours actually my colleague Jessica you can check that out now this is a little footpath which will take you up towards st. Mark's Church and up towards the area of Primrose Hill which is another beautiful view of London uh, up that little side street there Head down here to see some of the residential property with the canal boats, and I want you to see some of these beautiful houses along the way. Very colourful. Somebody's having a little bit of work done, I suspect. Somebody's trampoline. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, the pollen got a little bit back my throat there, you guys. Just get some water. <coughs> Truly is idyllic, isn't it? Single moored narrow boats only. You can hear the kiddies here inside. Obviously on their recess from school. School building behind the fence. We're more concerned with the side of the river. There's a cow there. It's rather bizarre. Very cool and funky on the canal. 
tree is magnificent. Willows. Sunshine really makes everything much more beautiful, doesn't it? Some of these little living space here. So as I mentioned, I'm not quite sure how happy I'd be living along here in the freezing cold of the winter. I'm sure it's quite difficult to warm the boats. Here's one of my favorite houses along the river there. A beautiful white house on the corner. In a very desired address of Primrose Hill area. So, I can't imagine you would get anything short of about a hundred million, I reckon. It's the pink one above here is really pretty. So I just wanted to show you how you can always find somewhere to escape the mania. Such a beautiful green city is London. Over 400 open green spaces. And Regent's Park is also home to the world famous London Zoo. And you will see, come across parts of the zoo if you take this little stroll yourself along the canal. Pink house, isn't it gorgeous? Very typical Regency period buildings. And the Regency period gets its name after the Prince Regent, who was the son of King George, King George III of England, famous last king in the Americas. Famously lost the colonies to the Americas, but uh, poor old King George III. It's a St. Mark's Church. King George III suffered from a liver disease called Protheria. And he became mentally incapacitated. It affected his brain. And he became so mentally incapacitated, he couldn't perform his duties as king. So his son took over in everything but name. He couldn't effectively become king until his father passed away. So he became regent, hence prince regent, hence regency period. And the favorite architect of King, when he became King George IV of England, was known as Georgie Porgy Pudding and Pie. His favorite architect was John Nash. And John Nash is famous for Developing Regent's Park, Regent's Street, along with Decimus Burton, Piccadilly Circus, extension of Buckingham Palace in 1702, and of course the canal I'm looking at right now. Yeah, I just want to take a little panoramic Look behind you, I want to show you this incredible place here. Isn't this just idyllic, folks? And all, only a short stroll from Camden. So I'm going to take the rest of the canal walk today, you guys. I'm going to finish up here. Hopefully you enjoyed our little stroll today. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more of these Walk With Me videos around London. I'm Sinead with free tours by foot. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.